party formed in 1963, another one formed in 1999. What we have now is 196 out of the contested 20. A resounding victory, an emphatic and landslide show by the citizens of Zimbabwe. We want to thank all the citizens who have shown us that from nothing we are now at number 90. Had it not been for rigging and other shenanigans that we saw, particularly in the countryside, would be talking of uh, almost uh, 26 out of 28. But tell you what, the citizens are very clear. They've made a bold statement, and that statement is that they believe in the triple C, the citizen coalition for change. There is a new kid on the block. It's a new game. This is our first victory, our first election, and we've done so well. I've heard some people saying that, ah, no, you retained your seats. We have no seats. We are on zero. We are starting afresh. Zanu PF and Mr. Mnangagwa took the seats we had in 2018 and gave them to MDC Alliance. MDC Alliance did not win any seat. Zanu PF, I'm not so sure if they won anything, but what we know is that we are now on number 19. And we are on this march to a two thirds majority in parliament come 2023. <coughs> Citizens have done well. And we thank a lot of people who worked from no resource from nothing but the citizens. Citizens, we want to thank you. You did it. We have done it countrywide. We are now standing on the municipal elections. Over 75 councillors out of the 120 that were contested. That's not a mean achievement. We have done very well. And we're excited. Against all odds. You know that with a lot of challenges, there was violence. We even lost one of our members, Boneni Nguye. Some of our supporters were beaten. Matibaba is a case in point arrested. And many others were injured in Arare, in Kwekwe, and in the various parts of our country. One of our candidates in Mashal and Central, their homestead destroyed. We had problems with the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission around the issue of uh, the water storm, we still have those problems. Yes, we have had a landslide, but that does not move away from the fact that the elections in this country need fundamental reforms around the voter storm, the credibility of the voter storm, around the issues of making sure that results are managed in a better way, polling stations are not subjected to the violence, intimidation that we have seen. Zanupev people do not believe in a free vote. They do not believe in the liberation agenda. They do not believe that citizens have the right to demonstrate their will and express themselves in a free and fair election. That's why they are abusing our traditional leaders, where the case in Mtasa and other rural areas, on the farm, farming areas, people are told that if you exercise your right to vote, you are inviting hazard, risk, and loss of life. That's not what the liberation struggle was for. It was one man, one woman, one vote. And that is what we want to see. People must be allowed and be permitted to vote for a part of their choice. If that happened, we're going to have a 100% victory. Because citizens are ready for change. Citizens are ready for victory. And I can tell you that what we've just done is a teaser, an introduction, and putting the nation and the world on notice that people see is the next government. There is nothing that will stop us from forming the next government. Yes, challenges are there. ZEC still has to reform. Electoral reforms have to be implemented. And we have said those reforms have to be put in place. That's why we have written to SADAC and asking SADAC to help us and also to have a political dialogue within the country around the reforms that we want to see instituted and put in place. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, thank you for covering the elections. And thank you for doing a fantastic job. We really appreciate it. We want to thank you for what you did. And we continue to count on you for covering these elections. Going forward, we are pushing for electoral reform. The journey has begun. The March 2023 has begun. We are on number 19. 
we want to get a two-thirds majority. We are on zero in terms of the actual vote on the presidential election. But we know that the presidential candidate we are going to have a 2.6 million. So we count on that 2.6 million going forward. And we want to make sure that we have a 6 million mark vote in the next election. Zimbabweans, you can do it. Register to vote. Those who didn't vote in the by-election, we understand. You said you wanted a general election that would change your life and that would change your situation and change the government. This is the opportunity. Do it. Register to vote. We want to thank you. God bless you. And we thank God for the journey because on our own, we could not do it. But because God is in it, the citizens are in it. Victory is certain. And we'll win Zimbabwe for change in 2024. Thank you. Thank you. So before the president goes, we're going to take a few questions. As usual, please identify yourself and the media house you come from and then ask one question so that we can take as many as possible. Thank you. You can just indicate with a show of hands. Yes. Yes. Um, Columbus Mavunga, VOA TV. Um, Mr. Mr. What, what lesson or what lessons do you learn from this um, by-election going forward in, into 2023? Well, ultimately, citizens are the final authority. Citizens are the final court of appeal. This was a correction of the mistakes made by various organs of the state, conniving against us. You know what happened in parliament, the illegal recalls, you know what happened with other political parties, conniving with Zanubia to try and decimate and destroy the people's project. But the citizens are ultimately the umpires, and they've said enough is enough on the mistakes by Mr. Mnangagwa and the side enough is enough on the mistakes by the courts and the final court of all courts is the will of the people and the people have expressed themselves they have said what we want is the face of change citizens know their leaders citizens know what they want and who they want and they have made an emphatic statement even in the rural areas forget about those huge figures Zanubia is not capable of being voted for all those figures are a fiction, and we have to deal with that because there are also gaps we need to deal with around how we are observing elections, particularly in the countryside, and also the issue of the traditional leaders and their roles in elections. Those are issues we are dealing with, particularly in terms of the countryside. But this whole lie that the countryside belongs to Zanipiev is a, is a hoax. It's a fallacy. We are very strong in the rural areas. That's why people are intimidated. No majority party intimidates its own supporters. There is no violence that is used by strong people. Weak people resort to violence. That's why ZANU's instrument of choice in dealing with the electorate and citizens is violence because they are not supported, particularly in the countryside. Look at what they did in Binga. Bicycles, poles. Yes, there's nothing wrong in distributing food. But people are not only carrying stomachs during election time. Remember them all the time. Don't go to them during the by-election. Bowls are not only necessary during elections. They need water all the time. That's why we are saying enough is enough. And with all that, all the things they did in St. Mary's and all the constituents, they did not make it. Thank you. Yes, sir? Uh, if I can take your Um I want clarity from you, uh, Mr. Misa. When you say that, that you have issues with SEC and you have engaged SEC, what form of engagement are you talking about? Because on Friday when we asked if there were any queries, any complaints from any political uh, players, both the Chief Elections Officer and uh, Commissioner Mangwana said that they did not receive any form of complaint from any political player except from Linda Masara. So, when you say you have engaged them, can you just tell us what, what form of engagement you need to talking about? Well, that's part of the evidence of the insincerity of Zek. You know, we, we wrote to Zek several letters around voters. They also responded to us. But in their response, they were not giving any answer that is solid. 
they were wish wash not committing to anything another one is integrity the honorable the honorable conduct of the zimbabwe electoral commission we have not seen that they were, were supposed to also pass the constitutional test in terms of following the constitution on all the requirements look at the complaints we had around the ballot paper itself how the pictures appeared and how how our logo appeared you can see that there is tomfoolery you can see that there is the part of Z. and these are the issues we have put on record the issue of the voters vote, the issue of our campaigns being disrupted by the police as is required by the law but there hasn't been any good news from Z. people have had their names being moved from one constituency to another Z is our constitutional body it is our collective referee we cannot allow them to choose one side or to be biased because they are required by the constitution and they have to pass that constitutionality test right the woman yes ma'am thank you uh william gomchenge from news uh you've spoken about reading <coughs> in the country that you have particular issues particular constituencies with this is happening and particular examples. Very particular examples, uh, Rutendo, we have Mutasa, Ruimbo, uh, we have Mutasa constituents, there was a by-election there, a ward. And there's evidence to that effect. Our local member of parliament, um, uh, Sarwaka, even raised it with the police. It's on record. We even went to the police to report what was happening? The whole village being asked to claim that they cannot write, they cannot read, you know. And the chief was there, the local village was there, looking at people. People know, know that when they make their choice, they are going to then lose their peace. So we can't have an election. People lose their freedom, people lose their peace. That's not the essence of elections. Just one case in point. We have cases of um, just a south, you know, where a guy Sunga was a candidate. The farming areas, almost a big problem. Mwenesi is a case in point. Chivi. But we have an answer to that. And we are. They are, they are seats that have been regarded as safe for the opposition in urban areas. Um, for, for instance, Epworth uh, and other council seats that were lost uh, uh, by predominantly the opposition uh, in, in this case. Uh, are you worried about this urban vote that tilted towards zanu PF in this by election I can't speak on behalf of the other opposition political parties, but uh, we are a new kid on the block. We have lost nothing. If anything, we have gained. From zero, we are now 19 members of parliament who are going to paint the parliament yellow. Mm -hmm. That's not, not a small achievement. Those in Zanupia will tell you that this is not small, including winning in Kwebe. <coughs> Mr. Mnangagwa, that's where he stays, and we are glad that his neighbors voted for us. That's a big statement. And we want to thank the people of Kwekwe for showing that they do not have confidence in their own neighbor, and they've supported us. That's a big victory for us. Marwanda Rawe were not allowed to come back. We did This is being won by people whom they were dismissing as having no plan. Now, if you are if you have no plan and you are able to win 19 seats against people who have a plan, then you must be a serious player. And we are serious players. As I told you, we are the next government. We have done very well. We swept, we swept all the, the, the we swept all the, 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 the seats that are in Lawaya, all the seats that are in Mashingo, all the seats 
uh, in Arare, except of course one or two, where, where we have just loaned, you know, uh, on, on account of our of our magnanimity. Mm. Because democracy is that you must also allow others, you know, to feel the fairness of competition. And, and we are okay with that. Yes, sir. And then I'll come to you. Uh, Chawanda Bruce from the DC. Uh, you, before you ended your, your, your initial speech, you mentioned that that's why you seek help from Saga. <coughs> That's why you need political dialogue. Who do you want? And we are the only other party that is big enough to then have that conversation and have a serious course of action for the nation. It takes two to tango. We are saying dialogue is important. Dialogue around electoral conditions and the reforms that we would want to see so that we do not have another disputed election. We still are not happy with this by-election. So it's magnanimity in victory. We do appreciate that we won, but winning in an unfair election does not make the election free and fair. We still need the election to be free. And fair. So even in victory, there has to be dialogue. A pre-election post-election part. In agreement on the nature and character of an election that we are going to have. So that we agree on what happens. happens to those who are going to win, what happens to those who are also going to help the winners, those who do not make it. So that's a very simple and straightforward what that, that we want. But suffice to say, we also want to thank, I mean, Therefore, we appreciate them. Dialogue is about the bad aspects of our electoral playing field. You know that in 2018, all the electoral observer missions indicated that we have problems with our elections. They identified a catalog of issues. We need to tick the boxes. Um, some analysts have said that. what is to come in 2023. How are you going to ensure that you mobilize people to vote and as political actors? Uh, because citizens uh, seem like it's all covered the weekend. And we are very focused on that leadership. But of course, we have internal processes around democracy, making sure that the citizens have a right to choose their own leaders. Because we have said citizens first, citizens at the center. So they will determine at the appropriate time who they want to see in leadership. I'm a caretaker leader, together with the team I lead with. You see them around. What we have not just done is to announce, because we don't need to announce our opponent 
our structure and who we are. Because once Peter and Paul shared, we know them, we will not do certain things premature. We want to do things in a proper manner. And we're going to do it at the appropriate time. So yes, you will see. a solid leadership structure and you will see it. institutional structures are in place and you will see it. I mean you would Right, to choose. Then say to those people, step down or stand down. They have a mandate that they were given by the citizens and it's expiring in 2022. If anybody chooses to recall them or do any funny thing, it's between those people who are acting in a very criminal way and the citizens. But what we can't do is to go and test people in terms of their loyalty. The citizen movement is for all citizens, including Mr. Munangami. If you were to come and join the citizens, the only thing that will not provide you a leadership seat for you. But he is a citizen. He's free and ready. He's welcome. That's why we have said everyone, including those in government, this is your movement. Liberation fighters and war veterans, this is your movement. It's a movement for all the citizens. So yes, uh, they are in parliament. We are not going to go there and say, if you are, you are going to the MDC, you are going, that's not our business. Our business is that we now have 19 members of parliament, those we can account for. Those who are under the citizen banner, under another different party, is their right as citizens, and we are not going to tamper with them. So we will not delve into those matters. Then, of course, the issue of the United Nations, yes, we feel that if we don't agree as citizens, through a dialogue around the elections we are going to be having. There is need for us to go to those international bodies to help us do what is required. We must remember that there is a difference between, between observation and monitoring. So we are exploring those different options in the context of inviting the UN. You know, It's not a ZANU-PF affair, it's a national affair. ZANU-PF represents just a portion of the population. We represent the greater part. And therefore, we need this conversation around the reforms that we need to see in the country, where we have a legitimate government in 2020.
Right, so all that remains, ladies and gentlemen, is for me to thank you very, very much on behalf of the Triple C for making time to come uh, today. We obviously thank the citizens who continue to have faith in us and believe in us and support our cause. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Thank you, colleague. God bless you and thank you. Thank you for coming to us in a short space. Within a short space of time, I mean, we just gave this announcement, I think, yesterday. And thank you for your kindness. We really appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Welcome. Oh. <laughs>